What's up everyone? Slasher Movies here and honestly I might have been living under a rock but last night I came across this YouTube channel called Llama Arts and basically what they do is they make these like really short animated horror stories where this guy sort of narrates over them and they're really simple but extremely effective and addictive. I watched like a couple last night and I was texting my friend I was like oh my god have you heard of this channel called Llama Arts? And he's like, yeah, yeah, have you seen the smiley face one? I'm like, no, I haven't seen that one. He's like, well, you need to watch it. But then as I was watching more of these, I realized, wait a minute. I should actually press pause and turn on my camera. So I'm going to react to some of these uh, videos of the, on their channel. I'm going to start, I'm going to do three, um, just because some of them do get a little lengthy. And I'm going to start with their most recent one which is Scary True Pool Horror Stories. Let's do this. Not done a reaction like this before, so this will be interesting. Oh no, here we go. Oh, I need my... Sorry, I didn't really plan this out. I'll turn the volume up. Scary True Pool Stories. It was approaching the end of summer, and my friends and I wanted to do some cool mischievous things before going back to school. So, we had the genius idea one night to sneak into a nearby community pool. It was actually only a couple blocks away. It's right smack in the middle of a residential area. So instead of sitting on a main road or something, it actually just sat around a bunch of houses on a quiet road. Mm. During the hot day, the little parking lot would be full and the spot would be bustling. But at one in the morning, the place was of course dead. There's obviously a big fence surrounding the whole front entrance, as well as a cage that gets closed up when the place closes. So our best way was to get in through the side. We snuck into the backyard of a neighboring house and hopped the fence over to the pool. It was as easy as that. The four of us took off our shirts and jumped into the pool, which in retrospect wasn't smart, since any of the neighbors could have heard the splashes and just called the police. But we were dumb high schoolers. It was very, very dark within that hole enclosing. So far the pool had that no bad. lights, which is why it closed at sunset. James, Courtney, and Alyssa were on the other side of the pool as I was just kind of doing my own thing at first, swimming around and getting my face wet. I saw Alyssa get out of the pool shortly after and run away. No. Nope. I swam over to see what was going on. She was just going to the water fountain, though. The three of us just bobbed around in the water for a bit, and eventually we heard Alyssa jump back into the pool from the other side. It was too dark to see much more than her black hair covering her face. But just then, we heard Alyssa playfully call something to us as she was walking back to the pool. The three of us in the pool looked at each other. And that ain't Alyssa! Doing the same thing as me, counting heads. There were three of us on this side of the pool, and here came Alyssa walking over to our side. So who was that on the other side? Oh God! Alyssa got in. No, Alyssa. You were saying. Head bobbing around the water across the pool. James said across the pool, "Who is that?" Not even two seconds later, the head went underwater and disappeared from view. Oh God! We took this time to whisper to each other, mostly things like, "What should we do? What if that's security? And should we run?" Suddenly, I felt something grab my no! head force and tried pulling me down into the water. I kicked, splashed, and yelled for help. James came over to pull me out of the pool while the girls were already running for it, screaming. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't until I got to the stairs of the pool that the grip on my leg was released and I was free. We hopped the same fence we climbed over to get in and ran all the way back to Alyssa's house. I was convinced that whoever that was was a security guard. That is, until they literally tried to pull me under the water. We don't know what to think. There are a few possibilities. Maybe it was just another kid messing with us. Maybe it was a security guard who went way too far. Or, most likely, it was a dangerous person who had ill intent. So that one really wasn't that bad. Um, it was a good entryway. I, it had some creepy moments, especially when, you know, poor guy's getting dragged underneath. And the best part is when you realize... That ain't Alyssa. Next one I'm gonna do is disturbing true Snapchat stories. Uh, I live my life on Snapchat via, so I have a feeling this one's gonna hit me personally. Plus, it's pretty short. All right, let's do this. Loading. Ooh. 
Here we go. God, this channel is so addictive. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. Yeah, One I don't work out, so I can't relate to this. running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy-looking kid, probably 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in the gym at all. I had had and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. I took my time finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then, he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. Oh, I'll God. skip most of the this conversation, so but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not without saying bye like three times, though. That night, I got a snap on my phone saying, from Sean. Yep. I nope. immediately sighed and said, oh, no. Yep. Just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap, and the kid was in a creepy, weird pose, face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his <laughs> hand and a half smile on his face. Nope, but I delete him. over the picture was hey. With oh my god. Lies. Two lies. I muttered the words, what the fuck? For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. Yep. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. I'm going to remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. I don't have that kind of courage. So I did. <laughs> I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. I'm sure not even a minute later. Again, a message popped up on my phone saying Snapchat from Sean. Oh, God. Some people just don't get the clues. Opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed. No smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. What? The text over the image said, Why did you remove me? Now I went as far as to block him, meaning he couldn't snap me anymore. And that was that. I threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone goes off, saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. No. He actually made a new account. This is going to be a bad snap. This is going to be a bad snap. snap. And felt my heart drop. <gasps> it was a picture of my front lawn. The text over it, answer me, bitch. The first thing I could think of was, how did he find my address? Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends are. The dumbest feature. Somehow, I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window ghost. and the blinds and started considering calling 911. It was the sound of taps on the window. I took a deep breath and with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. Yes. I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. Good call. Now I called 911. By the time they arrived, he was awake cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well, because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. <sighs> the only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account, but anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again. Oh, my God. The... The... Oh man, that kid, that poor guy is gonna be traumatized. You're just gonna have to delete the app. You're never gonna have to use Snapchat ever again. You're gonna have to delete the app. You're gonna have to delete Insta because you gave him the Insta. You're just gonna have to get rid of all that. All that, all that, all that. That one was super eerie and creepy and felt real. Like, really real. Like, I've been there where you add people on social media who you shouldn't have added, but you do it out of kindness. And then next thing you know, they're constantly snapping you. 
or they're talking or they're tagging me and stuff. And you're just like, bruh, chill, chill. That one was creepy. I almost want to see like a live adaptation of that. Okay, now we're doing the big one. We're doing The Smiling Man. This is the one that my friend said, oh, have you seen this one? You gotta watch this one. I haven't seen this one, so my expectations are pretty high for this one. So, yeah, let's do this. This will be the last and final one. Loading. I'm probably gonna watch all these videos by the end of the day because I'm so obsessed with this channel. About five years ago, I lived downtown in a major city in the US. I've always been a night person, so I would often find myself bored after my roommate, who was decidedly not a night person, went to sleep. To pass the time, I used to go for long walks and spend the time thinking. I, I spent so four much years like that, walking alone at night. I never once had a reason to feel afraid. I always used to joke with my roommates that even the drug dealers in the city were polite. But all that changed in just a few minutes of one evening. It was a Wednesday, somewhere between 1 and 2 in the morning, and I was walking near a police patrol park quite a ways from my apartment. It was a quiet night, even for a weeknight, with very little traffic and almost no one on foot. The park, as it was most nights, was completely empty. I went down a short side street in order to loop back down my apartment when I first noticed him. At the far end of the street, on no. my side, was the silhouette of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar no. to a waltz, no. but he finished each box with no. an odd forward stride. That's the devil. I guess you could say he was dance walking, headed straight for me, deciding he was probably drunk. I stepped as close as I could to the road to give him the majority of the sidewalk to pass me. The closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lanky and wearing an old suit. He danced closer still until I could make out his face. His eyes were open wide and wild, head tilted back slightly looking off at the sky. His mouth was formed in a painfully wide cartoon of a smile. Between the eyes and the smile, I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer. Yep. <laughs> I took my eyes off of him to cross the empty street. As I reached the other side, I glanced back and then stopped dead in my tracks. He had stopped dancing and was standing <gasps> with one foot in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me, but still looking skyward. Smile still wide on his lips. <laughs> I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but kept my eyes on the man. He didn't move. Once I had put about half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to where he had been standing to find him gone. Oh, God. For the briefest of moments, I felt relieved. Until I noticed him. He had crossed the street and was now slightly crouched down. I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance and the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I had looked away from him for no more than 10 seconds, oh my God. so it was clear that he had moved fast. I was so shocked and I stood there for some time, staring at him, and then he started moving toward me again. He took giant, exaggerated, tiptoed steps as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone, except he was moving very, very quickly. I'd like to say at this point that I ran away or pulled out my pepper spray or cell phone or anything at all, but I didn't. I just stood there, completely frozen, as the smiling man crept toward me. And then he stopped again, about a car like the way from me, still smiling a smile, still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. What I meant to ask was, what the fuck do you want? In an angry, commanding tone. What came out was a whimper. W what the fuck? Regardless of whether or not humans can smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my own voice. That only made me more afraid. God, this... But he didn't react to it at this all. This feels real. He just stood there, smiling. And then, after what felt like forever, he turned around, 
Very slowly, uh, I started dance walking away. Just like that. Good. Not wanting Time to turn to my back to him again. Time to go. I just watched him go. Time until he was to go. Away to almost be out of sight. And then I realized something. He wasn't moving away anymore, nor was he dancing. I watched in horror as the distant shape of him got bigger and bigger. He was coming back my way. He was coming back my way. And this time he was running. I ran too. I ran until I was off the side road and back onto a better lit road with sparse traffic. Looking behind me then, he was nowhere to be found. The rest of my way home, I kept glancing over my shoulder, always expecting to see his stupid smile. But he was never there. I lived in that city for six months after that, and I never went out for another walk. Yep. There was something about his face that always <sighs> haunted me. He didn't look drunk. He didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly insane. And that's a very, very scary thing to see. Yep. Yep. That freaked me out. That that would that was straight up horror. Like that got me going. That was scary. I was like, no. The whole time watching it, it was so scary and so good. So good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. So you guys, there you have it. That was me reacting to Llama Arts' channel. I love this channel. I'm probably about to fly through all their content, especially their like scary story stuff. I mean, it's just so good. It's so simple. The animation is simple, but really effective. The narration, I love that guy's voice. I would love to switch with that guy's voice. Like super good like I'm a big fan of this channel so you can find all the information on it in the description below also if you have other really cool scary shorts I guess that you think that might get me going it's easy to get me going uh, let me know in the comment section below and I'll let you know if I've already seen it or if I feel like reacting to it uh, but regardless I love this channel make sure you check it out if you're living on your rock and didn't know it existed um, and until next time you guys I'm Slash Movie Reviewer and you guys have just been slashed.